Hello everyone, welcome to video 12 of chapter 4. As promised, here we go through one more example using the slackness theorem. This is example 4.5.2 from your textbook. Let's read the, the statement. So, here you are asked to check whether a point that's given here, x star, that's a point, to verify if it is an optimal solution for this problem, which we call A. And the problem here is a max problem, max, maximize the objective function. And I have um, three constraints and uh, restricted variables. So pretty uh, a standard looking problem. So take a look and think how could we solve this. Okay, so again, um, it takes a few steps and our uh, main tool is the complementary slackness theorem. Okay, so step one. So the first thing, well, I need to verify that x star is a feasible solution because if it's not feasible, then there's nothing to do. Okay, and, uh, and at the same time as I'm checking if it is a feasible solution, I can also compute the slack at the same time. So let's do it. Let's call the slack S, and then I'll plug in x star in the constraint here and compute the slack. So it's a less than equal sign, so the slack will be computed by taking the constant term here minus the left-hand side evaluated at x star, okay? So s1 is 8 minus all that s star. And if you plug in the value, and there are only two non-zero terms, it's easy to figure out. This is 8 minus 8, which is 0, okay? You can double-check the details if you want. And then for the second constraint here, 16 minus that, you plug in x star, and you get 60 minus 16 is 0. And then the third constraint, you plug in 12 minus the left-hand side, which becomes 11, is 1. So the slacks are non-negative, so it's okay, which means x star is a feasible solution for A. Okay, now we will form the dual problem. We call it problem B. And... Uh, so we change the maximization into minimization, and uh, we follow the, the theorem, the definition of the dual. We know how to do this. So this becomes the, the y1, y2, y3 times, which was the right-hand side there, okay? And then the A matrix is transposed. And now we have four um, constraints and the coefficient of the objective function now becomes the constant term on the right hand side. Okay, so recall what was the x star. We remember for the x star, we know that the first element and the third element are non zero, right? <coughs> so if that shall be a optim optimal solution, then for the optimal solution of the dual, the slack for the first constraint and the third constraint shall be zero, meaning the inequality sign would be equal sign. Okay, so with that discussion in the back of our mind, and let's continue to step three. Okay, so assume that problem A has an optimal solution x star. We assume the x star is an optimal solution. Then, um, by duality theorem, we know the dual also has an optimal solution. And we let's call this optimal solution y star. So y star and has three components like that. Okay? Okay, so um, let's apply... Um, um, slackness theorem. There are two sides of it. Let's look at the other side. So I know that S3 is 1. That means um, the slack of the third constraint 
is bigger than zero, then this means the third component of the dual at the optimal must be zero. So we just need to figure out y1 star and y2 star. And then from the discussion we had here, we know if y star is the optimum, then these two will be satisfied with equal sign. Okay, so we can just copy these two down and then throw away y3 because it's zero and we get this two equations and two unknowns. Okay, and uh, it's not difficult to solve, so we can solve it. Okay, and then we find out that um, y1 star is 2 and y2 star is 1. You can easily plug it back and see the equation holds. Okay, so that means uh, um, y star that satisfies the um, slackness theorem would be 2, 1, and 0, y3 is 0. Okay, so we have this solution here. Yeah, so we're not done yet, right? Because we only have a candidate y star, which satisfies the slackness theorem, but we still need to check if it's feasible. So that's step four. Okay, so let's go through the constraints one by one. Let's look at the first constraint. We plug in the y value on the left hand side and then it's nine. The constraint wanted to be bigger than or equal to nine, so that's okay. Then let's go to the second constraint. This is the left hand side of the constraint. Plug in the solution, I get one, and the constraint wants it to be bigger than or equal to three, so this is not okay. The constraint is not satisfied. So what does that mean? Well, this means that y star is not feasible. So if it's not C feasible, can it be the optimal point? No, so y cannot be the optimal point, And therefore, the corresponding x star is not an optimal solution. Okay, so all that work, in the end, it failed. So, okay, so you want to solve it, you can set up the um, LP assistant and find out that solution. And you find out it's not the X star being presented here. Okay, so um, that's the end of um, chapter four. And the uh, next video will start in chapter five. Hope you have enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time.